In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Enhancement Shaman in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new Skillcapped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcapped.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Enhancement Shaman has two main options on the Alliance side. Your default pick will be Dwarf. Stone form is going to cleanse you of any bleeds, poisons, or diseases, but it won't remove magical debuffs and curses. This could be useful in removing debuffs such as wound poison or for dealing with feral druids. Drain Eye could be another option for the Alliance. The extra 1% hit in Gift of the Nehru are two very powerful racials as they provide some additional healing. The hit is helpful as it allows you to gear for a bit more damage. If you're wanting to play Horde, then you're limited to a literal single option here, and that is Orc. This is simply because of the stun reduction that's provided. While Troll and Goblin do give a little bit of haste, it's not useful enough to justify taking over the stun reduction. While all three racials are a solid pick for Enhancement Shaman, we do highly recommend Dwarf for general play as your toughest matchups are going to be Ferals and Rogues, and they are quite popular in Cataclysm. Talents work slightly different in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. There's only one build you're going to be playing as an Enhancement Shaman, and the only real points you're going to swap around are focused on trading off some damage for some more survivability. Your flexibility is going to come from toughness. Here, we've devoted all three points to this talent as you are going to be the main kill target in most matchups, and the extra stamina is going to help. Now, if you really wanted to, you could remove up to two points in toughness or one point in flurry to up to three points in elemental devastation. This will be more damage, of course, and you should only do this if you're certain you're not going to be the kill target in your comp. You'll also notice with this build that we're going into the Ellie tree to specifically pick up reverberation, reducing the cooldown of wind shear to five seconds. Then on the Resto Tree, we've picked up Spark of Life from more defensive bulk. Along with Talents, the Glyph system has changed just a little bit in Cataclysm. Now you'll have three additional Prime Glyph slots on top of Major and Minor. Your Glyphs are fairly set in stone, but there are some minor adjustments that you're going to need to make. Your first Prime Glyph is going to be Glyph of Feral Spirits. This is a flat damage bonus to Feral Spirit, which is your strongest burst cooldown. Your second Prime Glyph is Lava Lash. This is a simple damage increase to one of our main damaging abilities. Finally, we have Glyph of Storm Strike. This is another increase to our damage. If you're playing a tankier build with Toughness instead of Elemental Devastation, you might consider playing Glyph of Flame Shock. This increases the duration of your Flame Shock and tends to be your highest damaging ability. You could also play with Glyph of Wind Fury weapon as a more defensive option as this will give you more Maelstrom generation and thus more self-healing. With your build, you have the same three major Glyphs, Lightning Shield, Shamanistic Rage, and Stone Claw. Glyph of Lightning Shield will never drop below three charges when it deals damage back to attackers and can save us a lot of extra globals reapplying this. Glyph of Shamanistic Rage provides a dispel when you use this ability, even if you're stunned. Do be careful with this as it can proc backlash effects on abilities such as Unstable Affliction. 
Glyph of Stoneclaw is crucial for your survival as it gives you a damage absorb when you drop this totem. If you're playing with a Restoration Shaman, you should drop Glyph of Lightning Shield. You can only have one shield active and Earth Shield takes priority. In these cases, pick up Glyph of Hex, which reduces the cooldown of this ability by 10 seconds. Finally, our minor glyphs are not too important and won't have an impact really on the game at all. These are really up to you, but we slotted in Renewed Life, Water Breathing, and Water Walking as none of your minor glyphs will affect the game at all. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Confused about how to use your Maelstrom? Well, then look no further as we cover one of the main mechanics of Enhancement Shaman's gameplay. Now, Maelstrom has a chance to be generated whenever you deal damage with a melee weapon, and it's going to allow us to flesh out our kit for both defense and offense. This is because it will allow us to gain increased casting speed per stack up until it's instant, allowing us to quickly dish out a heal, increase our damage output, or land a hex. And although its stacks are very randomly generated, we can game it a little with unleashed elements as it will increase our attack speed, therefore increasing our chances to gain Maelstrom stacks. And just because you can use Maelstrom at five stacks for an instant cast, it doesn't mean you're always going to be doing this, as the haste gained from three stacks upwards is still fast enough to warrant using it. You can see Swapsy using this cast time here, where he lands a quick hex on the enemy mage, which although is casted, is far too rapid for the mage to really react to. So, apart from using Maelstrom for hex, we can also use it to heal us or our teammates with Greater Healing Wave, which will allow us to stay in the fight for much longer. And since Maelstrom stacks last for so long, you can even sit on your Maelstrom for when you need to heal, like in this clip where Swapsy waits for his warrior to drop before spending the resource. Wasting potential incoming Maelstrom stacks is honestly fine if it means we can save our teammates in an upcoming setup. Finally, we can use our Maelstrom for damage by spending it on an instant Lightning Bolt, which actually does pretty comparable damage to our other abilities, although it should be used sparingly as we often need Maelstrom to heal. In this clip, you can see Swapsy using Lightning Bolt as he's looking to finish off the Death Knight, and his rotational abilities of Storm Strike and Lava Lash are on cooldown. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over stat priority. You want as much agility as possible, which you're going to naturally acquire this through your gear. After that, you'll get 4% spell hit. You already have 6% melee hit as an Enhancement Shaman thanks to the dual wield passive but this doesn't affect your spells. You'll then need 195 spell penetration. This will ensure that your offensive spells such as are not resisted. Then you want at least 3,500 resilience. This will help ensure you can survive enemy kill attempts as you will be the primary kill target in most games. You then want mastery. Now there's no particular breakpoint you're looking for here and in fact, you want as much mastery as possible as it increases your damage with any ability that deals elemental damage. After that, you can look for Critical Strike. Now, while you do have abilities that increase this chance, it does bring you closer to more consistent crits for flurry uptime. Finally, Haste is your least desirable stat. In fact, in our biz list, you'll see that we have 0% Haste. Now, before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre-biz gear using the link in the description below. In Season 9, all of your best in slot gear is going to come from PvP. Shaman is a common kill target, and you're going to be thankful to have the extra resilience here. Your main pieces will be the Vicious Gladiator's Earthshaker set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's linked armor, gauntlets, spalders, and helm. You'll then use the Twilight Scale Leggings if you can get your hands on the heroic version. Otherwise, use the standard Vicious Gladiator's Linked Leggings. For your off pieces, you're going to want Vicious Gladiator's Cape of Prowess. Your bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Wrist Guards of Triumph. 
You'll then use Vicious Gladiator's Waste Guard of Triumph in the Waste Slot. Finally, to round out off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's Sabatons of Triumph in the Boot Slot. For your weapons, you're going to be using Vicious Gladiator's Pummeler in the Main Hand and in your Off Hand. You'll want the Cleaver if you're an Orc. The Relic Slot is going to be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Relic of Triumph. For your jewelry, you'll pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Necklace of Prowess. For your rings, you're going to want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Ring of Cruelty and Accuracy. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity. You'll then use the Vicious Gladiator's Badge of Conquest, but you could also use the Insignia of Conquest in this slot too. When it comes to reforging, you won't need to do much here. The goal is to stick to your stats. You can reforge for more mastery when you achieve your hit cap. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Agility, comes from PvP, so it's going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Agility for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the Auction House, where you're going to pick up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra damage from Peerless Stats is going to be beneficial. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak is going to be enchanted with Sword Guard. If you choose another profession, then you'll want to grab Greater Critical Strike. You'll then grab Agility for your Bracers, Greater Mastery for your Gloves, and Mastery for your Boots. Now, we don't care about the movement speed enchant since they don't affect Ghost Wolf movement speed. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with Dragon Scale Leg Armor. And then put Landslide on your main hand, Imperium Weapon Chain on your off hand. If you want to squeeze out a little bit more damage, you can put Landslide on both weapons. Finally, don't forget to get an Ebon Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gemmed. For your meta socket, you're going to be sliding in a Agile Shadow Spirit Diamond. This is going to provide you with some agility and increase the amount of damage that your critical strikes deal. In your red slots, you'll only be using Lucent Ember Topaz, as this is going to help give us a balance of agility and resilience. In your blue slots, you need to be using Stormy Ocean Sapphire so that we can reach our spell penetration cap of 195. And in our yellow slots, we're going to be using Mystic Amber Jewels for resilience. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices. You'll want to go Tailoring and Jewel Crafting. Your first default pick is Tailoring for Sword Guard Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive attack power bonus, which you can snapshot with your Feral Spirits. Jewel Crafting is our second pick. This allows us to use the Chimera's Eye Gems. Now, by default, you're going to use the Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience, but you can go with the Delicate Chimera's Eyes for more damage. This reduces our survivability quite a bit, but if you're confident you're not going to be targeted, then this can be a good option for some additional damage. You do have the option of going blacksmithing as an alternative here. Now, it's technically slightly less stats in Season 9, but it will be more stats in later seasons when we have access to epic gems. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro. First up, you want focus macros for Hex, Purge, and Wind Shear. These are your main forms of utility, so you want to be able to reliably and quickly respond to any situations. Purge is good to remove important buffs such as Innervate. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 123 macros for Hex and Wind Shear. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. You can also create a macro to use Stone Form with Health Stone if you're playing Dwarf and struggling to survive. We also recommend having party macros for Cleanse Spirit, Healing Wave, and Gift of the Nehru. This is going to allow you to quickly use these abilities without having to target your teammates. You'll also want to pair your on-use trinket with Feral Spirits. If you do macro these together, then make sure that you put your trinket first or it's not going to snapshot. Finally, you can consider making 1-2-3 macros for your shocks. 
This can allow you to instantly root or reapply Flame Shock when it's dispelled or falls off. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.